everyone, welcome to Kids Church. Hope you've had a good week. Isn't it lovely to see the spring flowers? We've got some daffodils in our garden. Today we're going to look at another child in the Bible. More about that later. First of all, some of you are going back to school on Monday and we'd like to pray for you. Dear Jesus, we pray for all those going back to school. Help them to settle back happily. Please give them peace. Help them cope with the changes. Protect them and help them. Please help the teachers and parents too. Amen. Over to Chris for today's fact file. Welcome to today's fact file. Now today's story is about another child in the Bible and I've got some envelopes here and on the front of every envelope there's a question and inside there's the information. So, boy or girl, is the story in the Old Testament or the New Testament? What is the child's name? Is there any family information? How old is the child? Where did the child live? Oh, this one says big hint. I wonder what's inside this one. Okay, so as I open the envelopes and find out the information we know about this child, I wonder if you'll be able to work out which story we might be telling today. So boy or girl? Well, last time story was about a girl and we had Samuel and David before then so I wonder if this is a girl story or a boy story let's find out what do you think oh it's a boy it's about a boy okay it's the story in the Old Testament or the New Testament what do you think which part of the Bible, the Old Testament or the New Testament? The New Testament. Okay, so it's about a boy in the New Testament. What's the child's name? Let's see what we find out from this envelope. What's the child's name? Oh, we don't know. So it's about a boy, but we don't know his name in the New Testament. Family information. Well, that would be about his mum or his dad, whether he had brothers or sisters. I wonder what we know. <gasps> Nothing is known about this boy's family. Goodness me. Okay. How old is the child? I wonder. Okay. Under 13 with a question mark. Oh well, Jewish boys at 13 were considered to be men. So I guess that means although we may not know exactly how old this boy was, he wasn't yet 13. He wasn't yet considered to be a man. Okay. Where did the child live? Well, that would be really helpful to know, wouldn't it? If it was Jerusalem or Bethlehem or Nazareth or... I wonder. What do you think? Oh. Somewhere in Galilee. Well, Galilee is that northern part of Israel around the Sea of Galilee. It's a region, so we don't actually know which town or village our boy comes from, just the sort of area, so somewhere near the Sea of Galilee. Big hint. Well, I think we need a big hint because we don't know very much about this boy, do we? I wonder what the big hint is. He was in a crowd of people who spent 
some special time with Jesus. Which story is it? I wonder if you've guessed. We haven't had a lot of facts to go on, but somebody who spent some special time with Jesus. Well, Jenny's telling our story today. So let's go over to Jenny and see what we can find out. So our story today is about a little boy. No, it's just one little boy. He didn't really stand out. He wasn't really even noticed. He didn't seem particularly special. And like last week, we don't even know his name. He was in the crowd that were listening to Jesus speak. He was just one of the many people in the crowd. He wasn't spotted probably by Jesus to begin with. He was just there. He had his dinner that his mum had packed for him that day. And there was something very special about this little boy. He offered the little he had and gave it to Jesus, even though he didn't think it was very much. He gave the little he had to Jesus to make it into something bigger. So let's tell you the story. People followed Jesus everywhere he went. They were so interested in what he had to say. They listened morning, afternoon, evening. They just kept listening. It was so interesting. And Jesus spoke like no one they'd ever heard before. Time just stopped when they were listening. They were sitting listening to everything he said. They weren't thinking about what time it was, but they were beginning to get hungry. They hadn't really packed picnics or prepared to come out for a really long while. There was no McDonald's up the road to go and buy something from. And Jesus' friends said, let's send the people away to go and go home to get their dinner. Jesus said, no, you give them something to eat. Who? Us? Yes, you. Jesus' friends were a bit worried they hadn't got enough money to be able to give all those people enough to eat. But Jesus said, you don't need to send the people away to go to get anything. You give them something here right now. Us, we don't have anything to give. So they thought, and they thought, well, I wonder what the people have. And they asked, has anybody got any food? And there was just our little friend. He said, well, actually, I've got the dinner that my mum packed me in my little bag. All I've got is five loaves and two fish. My dinner. My dinner. Mm. At that point, the little boy could have thought, well, yes, that's my dinner. But he didn't. He offered the little he had and he gave it to Jesus to make it into something bigger. Wow. Jesus' friends, to begin with, just laughed and thought, well, that's not enough, is it? But Jesus smiled. Jesus smiled and said, I'm going to take what the little boy has. And so he took it from the little boy. And the first thing he did was to thank God. He looked up to heaven and said, thank you for the food that he had been given. Thank you. Jesus knew that God had made everything in the first place and he was completely capable of making something small into something big. After all, 
He had made the world out of nothing. He could definitely make, him, make something little into something big. So Jesus took it and he thanked his father for the food. And as he thanked the father, the food just kept coming and coming and coming. And what was very small in the little boy's bag, remember the little boy's bag that he'd offered to Jesus, Jesus multiplied and made into more and more and more and more and more until everybody in the crowd had had plenty to eat and there was even more left over. The little boy had trusted that the little he had could be made into something greater for Jesus. What if the little boy had decided, mmm, it's mine, I'm going to keep it for me, and he walked away from the crowd and they stayed hungry. Or he could have thought, what is the little that I've got? It is of no use to Jesus. But he didn't, did he? He came and he gave the little he had to Jesus and God made it into something bigger. The little boy trusted that God could do it. He was obedient. He was he shared what he had. He didn't keep it for himself. And he trusted that God could do more than we can ever imagine with the little he had. Hello there. My name's Ruth. You might remember me from Messy Church because I really like doing craft things. And this morning we're going to have a, a look at um, making a craft thing to go with our story today. And we're going to make a little basket that the little boy had with his lunch in it. See how we get on. These are the things you're going to need. First, we're going to need some bits of paper for drawing on. Then we'll need something to draw with. We'll need some scissors and we'll need something to do colouring in with. This can be pencils like this or paint like this and of course a paintbrush. And we'll need some ribbon or a piece of string for the handles of the shopping bag. If you've got a plate like this, a paper plate, that'll be really useful. But if you haven't, you could use an old cereal box. You'll need to make a little, some little holes in the, in the basket to put the handles through. So if you've got a, a hole punch, use that. If not, use scissors and get an adult to help you if it's a bit too hard for you. So this is the inside of the cereal packet. And if we haven't got a paper plate, we can draw around an ordinary plate to get the right shape. So here we go, really easy. Circle around there to get our nice round shape around a plate. And then we've just got to cut it out. Right, don't forget to put the bits in the bin. So you have either one of these, it can be your basket, and then you need to colour it in. Now, if you've got paint, you could use paint. But if you haven't got any paint, you could use some of your colouring in things. Um, 
so I'm just going to paint this quickly. I've made this sort of baskety colour, but you could make it any colour you like because it's going to be your craft project. So here we go. There we go. I think that looks wonderful, but you can do whatever colour you like. So we're going to leave that to dry for a few minutes and then we're going to get on with drawing some pictures of our fish and our loaves. Now here's a couple of little fish I did earlier that I can show you a very simple way to draw fish. You need one of your scraps of paper like this. Can you see this? And then you draw a half circle like this. Can you see that? And then you draw a half circle the other way, like that. And then if you give it an eye, that looks quite fishy, doesn't it? And then this part can be his tail. We'll have to make it a bit wider there because otherwise his tail might fall off. So then we need to give him some scales like this. So there's his head part. And then here's some scales. Okay, now we need to draw two of these and then we colour them in. Now you can have any colour you like for your fish. You can have really bright fish if you like, or you can have grey fish. It's up to you. I'm going to colour mine in now. And now you've just got to cut them out. So here we have our fish all ready to cut, already cut out, ready to go in the basket. So the next thing we need to make is the loaves. So here we go and we're going to draw some very simple loaves like this sort of shape, like this. They're probably, they were probably rolls I should think because five loaves would be a bit big for a little boy to have for his lunch, wouldn't they? So you need to draw five of those and then colour them in. I expect if you can get it to be sort of bread colour, that would be a good thing. So this is how we draw a very simple loaf. It's a bit like the fish actually, because it's like a half circle like that. And then another half circle like that. And then we're going to have some little pieces like pieces out of an orange, little orange segments like that. And that makes it look like it's bread. Easy peasy. Okay. So here we have our five loaves and all I've got to do now is just them out. See you in a minute. Ready to go. Now we just have to make the basket. Now if you're lucky enough to have a hole puncher in your house that's a really neat way to do this. So we just cut one hole there ready for the handle. But another way you can do it is by um, making a circle like this then we're going to poke that through there now if you, you might need a hand from an adult there we go that pencil's gone right the way through there 
that's handy isn't it so now what we've got to do is fold this in half like that so it looks a bit like a basket and then we're going to thread our ribbon or wool or string whatever you have got through there so I'm going to cut this in two like this Then you just have to thread the handles through the holes. Ta da! Like that. You can poke it through with your pencil. And tie the handle ends together like that. And you tie knots. And then we get the other one that goes through as well. It is tied like that. Now there we have. There we have our little basket. All we've got to do is put our fish and loaves in there. And there we have. That was the little boy's lunch, which he very kindly shared with everybody else. It's good to share, isn't it? So when they had all finished their food, they collected up all the bits of food that were left on the ground and they filled up loads of baskets. So don't you forget to tidy up as well. Bye. So our memory verse today says, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Do you remember our little boy who gave his little lunch to Jesus? And Jesus made something little into something big. So in Matthew, it tells us this, Matthew 19, verse 26. And when you say a verse, depending on where you put the emphasis, which word you lean on, it can sound a little different, can't it? So we're going to say it this time, putting the emphasis on Jesus. There. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So we were leaning on Jesus. But what if we said, Jesus looked, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But what if we said, Jesus looked at them. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. All things are possible. But what if we said, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, because it's with us, isn't it? With people. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. But what if we said, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. How many times do we say, mm, that's not possible. But our verse says, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with Jesus, with God, all things are possible. So what if we put the emphasis this time on God? Because it's God that makes the difference, isn't it? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, 
all things are possible. This time we're going to put the emphasis on all, because sometimes we think that God does just some things, but not everything. But our verse says, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Wow. Even the little boy's lunch that was so small became something big. God can do the impossible with all things. What if we put the last thing possible? So many things we think are impossible, but God makes them possible. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. God takes our little things and he makes them into big things and he does the impossible. Wow, Jesus can do that for you too. Thank you, Jenny, for reminding us that nothing is impossible with God. What an amazing story. The little boy had a choice, but he gave what he had to Jesus. And Jesus took something very little and used it to bless lots and lots of people. That's just a wonderful story to know that God can take the little that we have to offer him and do something amazing with it. I wonder what you've got that you could offer to God. I'm not thinking of loaves and fishes. I'm thinking about being kind, being helpful, being friendly, giving things to people who need them when we don't need them, finding different ways to make a difference. You know, Jesus said to his friends that if we gave a cup of water to a little child, it was like we were giving it to him. Wouldn't that change how we do things if we know that when we're kind to somebody, when we're helpful, when we do something we don't have to do, but we do it anyway, when we give something to somebody who needs it more than we do, it's like we're doing it to Jesus. Wow, I wonder what we could give to Jesus this week that he could use to bless other people. Let's talk to Jesus now. Dear Jesus, thank you that you took the gift that the little boy gave you, those loaves and fishes, and you fed more than 5,000 people. We want to give you the little we have. Perhaps we can help someone this week. Perhaps we can be kind. Perhaps we can be friendly. Would you help us to know how we can make a difference? And as we give you the little things that we can do, we pray that you will turn them into big blessings. Amen. We're going to finish with a song. God can do anything, anything at all. We used to enjoy singing this one when we met together. It's got some actions for the chorus. Don't push him in the box, don't shove him in the corner, don't you limit what he can do. Just a word of warning, it gets faster and faster and faster. Enjoy singing it and enjoy remembering that God can do anything. Have a good week and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Don't show him in the car, don't you limit what he can do Don't put him in the box, don't show him in the car